about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let us not make God have to use the hidden because we have not risen to positions of authority. Let's not get to points where people who do not name the name of the Lord start having visions about the revival because they have the power to cause change. Thank God for our prayer and fasting. Thank God for our night vigils. But hear me, there is a higher call in the spirit to rise to positions of influence. Thy kingdom come. There are five pillars that I've seen from scripture and I've seen from the life of true kingdom ambassadors, men and women, dead and some alive today, who have been mighty agents of kingdom come, models for us to follow. The Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Are you ready? Pillar number one, very quickly, growth and transformation. The first pillar that is responsible for the revelation of influence or the revelation of the kingdom through influence is growth and transformation. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says, And Jesus grew or increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. When men grow, influence is close to them. Growth and transformation. Sustaining superior beliefs. Look at me. You will never be able to do much with God, no matter how well-intentioned you are, if you do not trust God to replace some of the faulty belief systems that have come from culture, come from our past, come from our failures. Regardless what your background has been, I sympathize with you. But if you want to do business with God, you must subscribe to a superior belief system. A superior belief system is not an educated belief system. It's the belief system that is consistent with the ways of God. There are many intellectual belief systems and they have their role to play. But we are talking of the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 when you read, it says to permit this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a mental disposition that Jesus had that made the Holy Spirit comfortable living in him. Psalm 78, when you read from verse 41, the Bible says they limited the Holy One. They limited Him in the, in the wilderness. They turned back. They tempted God. They limited the Holy One. They said, can God make a table in the wilderness? We must trust God. Listen, superior living comes from superior belief systems. If your belief systems, the... the, the one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit is not just to produce miracle signs and wonders. That's important. But the major assignment of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life is to culture him to a, a dimension where he begins to think like Christ. Growth and transformation. Pillar number two. Let's hurry up. The second pillar that governs influence is value and productivity. Please write it down. Value and productivity. 
Exodus chapter 31, when you read the first five verses, the Bible talks about Bezalel, talks about a man in whom the wisdom of God and in knowledge that he was uh, a man who was skilled in all manner of workmanship. You read to verse 5. Productivity and value. Unfortunately, you do not hear this emphasized in church. Value and productivity. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. The Bible says the gift of a man can make room for him, he says, and that it is able to bring him not before mere men, before great men. The gift of a man is like a lift. It can take you from ground floor and take you right to the place of destiny that you ought to go. Remember our motivation. It's not just self-aggrandizement, no. Our motivation is to be able to rise to the platforms that give us an opportunity to represent his purposes and influence the mindset, the convictions of individuals and of territories. Are we blessed? Value and productivity. First Kings chapter 7, please. 13 and 14. Years ago when God showed me this scripture, it changed my life completely. It, it destroyed mediocrity from my life completely. First Kings chapter 7. It says, and King Solomon, this was the building of the temple. King Solomon sent and fetched out Hiram out of Tyre, the economic hub of the then world. The Bible gives us a little background about that young man, Hiram. He says he was a widow's son from the tribe of Naphtali. He says, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. The Bible records that he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works of brass. The Bible says, and he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. When you serve kings, you will receive the reward of kings. Is God blessing us this morning? Mm. Value and productivity. It is important that believers are not only faithful church goers, faithful church workers. We must trust God to rise to a level of value, productivity, and competence that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Is one of the pillars of influence. Show me a man that is valuable. Show me a man that is competent. Show me a man that is productive. I show you a man whom mediocrity will never be found around him. Are we blessed? Value and productivity. The third pillar. Hmm. Wisdom and excellence. The third pillar of influence is wisdom and excellence. Daniel chapter 5, please. We'll read from verse 12 to 15. Daniel chapter 5. From verse 12 to 15. This is Daniel. For as much as an excellent spirit, the Bible says, and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, showing of hard sentences, dissolving of doubts, were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. We are reading to verse 15. Then Daniel was brought in before the king, and the king spake unto Daniel, Are thou Daniel, which are the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought out of Jerry? I have even heard of thee, influence, right to the palace, the report of Daniel got there. Do you know words are powerful? They can immortalize your presence. You can be in one location and yet the glad tidings of what God is doing in your life can spread all across the globe. When Daniel came, please keep that scripture, he was received because his good works, let's go back to verse 13, had gone ahead of him. Okay, verse 14 now. I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom there is a kind of wisdom called excellent wisdom. It says, oh God, our God, how excellent. Not just how great, how excellent is your name. 15. And now the wise men and the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. A wise man. When you read chapter 6 from verse 1, the first three verses, chapter 6 of Daniel, 
It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom. We're reading to verse 3. And over these three presidents of whom Daniel was what? First. That the princes might give account to them and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel, not another one, this Joshua Selman, this covenant, call your name, I, I, I'm calling my own name there, was preferred above the presidents. So someone can be higher than a president. Someone can be higher than the princes. Why? Because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over, not the house, the whole realm. Influence that comes through wisdom and excellence. Are we blessed? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, Paul mentoring the church in Ephesus, he was talking about the church, the ecclesia, that spiritual strategy that God invented by his wisdom to bring the kingdom to this side of his of his. Uh, of his of his fair this 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 side of of earth which is which is a part of his kingdom he invented a strategy and he called that strategy the church the church is a strategy like you invent a vaccine to solve a problem the church is a spiritual strategy it's more than a people it's more than a gathering it's more than a location it's more than just a collective group of believers the church the ecclesia is a spiritual strategy please give us that scripture ephesians 3 and verse 10 to the intent this is why the strategy was designed to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the multi-sided wisdom of god the manifold wisdom of god are we blessed yes wisdom and excellence do not downplay this you will never be able to rise to a level of kingdom influence that can bring the reality of the power and the glory of God if you lack wisdom and if you do not sustain the spirit of excellence. The powerful thing about these pillars is that you don't have to be born with them. Through your alignment and through your hunger and through your press, taking advantage of the grace of God, you can step into these things. That means you can walk into something you were not born with. So there are no excuses. Say in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I receive grace, I receive grace. for wisdom. And excellence. excellence next pillar please the fourth pillar that controls influence in this kingdom is wealth and abundance write it down and think about it while you are writing wealth and abundance let me show you two disturbing scriptures Ecclesiastes In fact, let's start with Proverbs 22. We'll read verse 2, then we'll rush to verse 7. I wonder why these scriptures are in the Bible. Look up, please. Ready? Let's read together. The rich and the poor meet together. Look at this. The Lord is the maker of them all. What kind of statement in the name of honesty is this? He would have just said, human beings meet together. God is creator. But he now said the rich and the poor meet together. He's trying to make a statement that the Lord is the maker of them all. God made them as men. They separated themselves into those descriptions. Are you seeing it now? Don't forget our motivation again. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Let's go to verse 7. Proverbs 22 and verse 7. You see why it's a disturbing scripture? When the Bible talks about ruling... It connects it to wealth. Read with me the first four words. Ready? The first four words. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. Leave whoever the rich rules over. Just the fact, our concentration is that it is the rich that is ruling. 
it doesn't matter who is under our concern is that it is the rich that is ruling over please keep that scripture there the rich ruleth over that's it that if you sustain the wealth of the kingdom it can give you a leverage to rise to a position of influence where you can exact dominion over individuals, over a system, over a territory. The rich rule it over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Two more scriptures. Genesis chapter 42. We'll start from verse 1 and 2. Genesis 42. This is Jacob now. Genesis 42 one and two please help us now when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt everybody say corn in egypt corn. there was corn there is nothing wrong with corn the only problem is the location just keep that scripture there it is dangerous when only egypt has corn because egypt is not a place that honors god however there is that is the only place that has corn the bible says when jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt because of the sheer hunger of famine Jacob said to his sons why do ye look upon one another verse 2 he says behold I have heard that there is corn in Egypt now go down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die a prophet without corn will still die please listen to this the only thing that takes the saints to Egypt is hunger. Hunger has a, a power of invitation that you cannot resist. It will draw you from anywhere you are to where you will be destroyed. Was it not because they went to Egypt that they were saved for a while and then later became slaves? Hunger will always take the church to Egypt. I have seen that there is corn. Even though I do not like the location, there is nothing I can do about it. Because if we do not go to that location, although we are prophets, we will die. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, the fourth pillar of dominion and influence. Verse 13. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 13. This wisdom I have seen under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Uh huh. We're reading to verse 16. There was a little city, so it's talking about a city, and few men within it. The Bible says, and there came a great king against it and beside it, and built great bulwarks against it. Scene 2. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. Everybody say it. Poor wise man. One more time. The Bible says, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet, no man remembered that same, it doesn't talk of wisdom again. Wisdom has finished his assignment. Yet, no man remembered that same poor man. And then here was my conclusion, 16. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nigeria, Lagos, Covenant Nation, Wafbeck, nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words. So, wealth becomes the trade that carries wisdom to serve it well. The poor man's wisdom is despised. Can I tell you this? I know that there are abuses here and there and people have made all kinds of things out of what we call prosperity but in the name of Jesus reject poverty Amen. it's an advice reject it think of your children while you are rejecting it think of your loved ones while you are rejecting it I give you an advice by the road of the apostolic and the prophetic in these end times reject poverty it's an individual choice I said before you life and death I said before you blessing and cursing do not allow 
anyone flatter you into believing that with mediocrity and lack, somehow you will still navigate your way to rise to influence. It's a joke. Not in today's world. These are the pillars of influence. Let's do a quick recap before we touch on the last one and then we round up. That the first pillar is growth and transformation. The second pillar is value and productivity. The third pillar is wisdom and excellence. The fourth pillar is wealth and abundance. The fifth pillar is the supernatural. The ministry of signs and wonders. A mysterious pillar that is able to lift the name of Jesus and the banner of his name and his praise across territories. Acts chapter 5 and verse 12 down to 16. Shiba Kasubariata. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all in one accord and in Solomon's porch. We're reading to verse 16. And the rest does not, and of the rest does no man join himself to them. But the people did what? Magnified them. The word magnified here is not a wrong word. It's, it's the word that was buttressed in Galatians 1 and verse 24. And they glorified God in me. God can be glorified in and through a man's life. The excellency of your results. The display of the power of the kingdom. When men begin to lift you, then you lift his own name. So it becomes higher than you. He says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men to myself. Back to that scripture, please. Acts chapter 5. We're reading now from verse 14. The Bible says, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. 15. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter's passing. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. I just sang Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. It says to stand in the way. Please give us that scripture. As I just read this, it just touched me. How far from the standard of God today's church is. That a man's shadow, he was not in a crusade, he was passing. Today a blind eye is open and thank God we celebrate miracles. But look the efforts that are dissipated. We call upon God. We clash cymbals. We play keyboard. We sing. We jump. We lay hands on our head. I'm not against those things. But I'm saying look the effort. As though God does not want to show up. There is something we are missing. We need to return to the authentic place of provable power. Dimensions of the grace of God that dumbfounds principalities and powers. You are a ministry here. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Thank God for the trickles of miracles that we see. But in ancient times, we will not even be qualified to be ushers. Not even in the welfare department. Find out the condition that you had to go through. Show us the ancient path. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. 
I have seen miracles and signs and wonders in my life I say it with all humility but do you know every time I read scripture sometimes I just close my Bible and tears will just come down from my eyes I say Lord who deceived us like this Apostle Joshua Selman a great man of miracles you read your Bible and see that we do not come close to the least spiritual people in those days now this is not condemnation this is how you are challenged men can clap you into dimensions where you plateau in the spirit and stop rising and stop growing there must be a perpetual hunger and that hunger comes when you compare yourself with the reference of scripture not among yourselves for they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise the bible says the shadow of peter Mandi brando that you come and buy a soft drink just because your hand touched someone's shop as soon as you leave you brought heaven you come to visit someone you just sat down on their chair and say peace be unto this house suddenly storms 10 year old storms they hear your voice like a tornado in the realm of the spirit shalom be still church of the lord jesus wake up although we have seen the hand of god let's pat our backs only briefly there is a lot to do if we need to rise to a position where the church will not be silent it will not come by singing there is a dimension of the supernatural we need to reintroduce the foundation of the church in nigeria please take it higher for me my spirit is fired up now Jeez. the church in nigeria have you read about our fathers the men and the women who handed this gospel to us they were men who were not really educated but they were men who had fire these were men who met god and they knew they met him i was watching a video one day and i began to cry one of the old yoruba prophets i don't know how the holy ghost led me to that video and he was talking and the sheer glory and presence that emanated i didn't know what he was saying and honestly i didn't care you, you didn't need to be a Yoruba person to be blessed. The power that came from that man. I said, God, what has happened to us? Where did we miss it? This is my final session with you. This has been my obsession to tell the church, thank you for what you are doing, but let us wake up. If we think we are going to win the world at this pace, think again. There is a dimension of the power of God this is not for preachers this is not about ministry the effulgence of the life and the power and the glory of God that the Holy Ghost came upon meetings that refused to finish them they were supposed to be two-hour meetings well intentioned and someone just raised a song and that song brought his majesty and people there was no preacher again ah. oh lord you are my god psalm 63 says early will i seek you it says my soul longs for you my flesh tests for you it longs for you as in a dry and a weary land where there is no water verse 2 is the reason to see thy power and your glory in my life the same way I saw in the sanctuary. Let me tell you this. This is a generation that seeks for signs. These are not generations who will be loyal for nothing. The generation of our fathers that could be loyal to you, whether they understand you or not. This generation is intelligent enough to say, if you claim that God heals, here is my sick son. I told God, do not send me if all you give me is a sermon do not send me if all you give me is a lecture do not send me if all i will go with is my brain 
do not send me if all I go with is a song let there be a token of your presence upon my life let there be a token of your presence upon my hand why will i preach and when i'm done we just share the grace and the sick go back sick the oppressed go back oppressed listen if we do not rise to this level of the supernatural in the body of christ a time will come people will shout amen but we know they don't believe what we are saying and can i tell you this the desperation of men is beginning to push them to look for solutions because men are not fools if they don't find it with you and they discern god is not with you they will respect you for who you are but they will quietly go and look for where to get real solutions many testimonies we share in church today did not come from church i'm sorry to say it forgive me we'll reconcile after the meeting but it's true because when men become desperate they can do anything don't toy with the desperation of men i will not watch my son die if i come to you and you cannot heal the person that desperation of a mother will push people to go and get solution anywhere and yet we continue to say jesus is lord we continue to say since i was young now i am old out of a hundred people if two people are healed is that a good assessment if there are 30 blind people and only two see yes we give god glory but that's not all god can do This is my obsession. This is why we refuse to get satisfied. The supernatural manifestation of God's power by which God demonstrates his ability to save, to heal, to deliver, to lift, to prosper his people. They are expressions of his love. They are also expressions of his might. Can I tell you this? Our world today is an arrogant world. The spirit that was on Nebuchadnezzar, Darius, the spirit that was on Herod, has now come and is sitting on the kings of the earth. You see the way they cheapen the church now, and they say it with all sense of pride. It's almost as if you are deserving of an award to the degree to which you downplay the church. It's not their fault. There is a dimension of the display of the power and the glory of God that can silence the mouth of all and sundry. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, surely this is the house of God, the gates of heaven. In the days of the generals, there were a few people who sat down and they were mocking, they were making mockery of, of um, Maria Woodward Eater. They laughed at her in her crusade and she looked at them and said, God judge you. The tongue of one of them protruded. They prayed and prayed, it didn't go down. He had to come himself and say, do you know what? I was stupid, now I know Jesus is Lord. She slapped the tongue and it went down. Now, when you have an example like that, that a popular madman on the street of Lagos a popular demonic suddenly he comes under the influence of this kingdom that we so boast about and his life comes under perfect order it is my prayer that we will not only watch miracles and signs and wonders in the life of those who have pressed a bit into God, but that there will be a hunger in us to say, Lord, I'm tired of an ordinary life. I'm tired of just praying and saying things I cannot defend. I'm tired of proposing dimensions about God. I do not sustain the grace requirement to defend. I write these things unto you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. I have a few minutes this is my final session we are going to pray and I want to pray for you it is my desire that something will come upon your life who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down and every ocean rose 
to the King of Kings. That's the God that we serve. Who is like him? The lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down and every ocean rose to the Lord of Lords. We will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day praise Adonai all the nations of the earth all the angels and the saints sing praise listen let there be a desperation in your heart as we pray for the next two minutes cry unto God there is there is a need oh God for my life to be part of the lives that you use to bring down the kingdom, the power and the glory of heaven. I'm tired of church as it is. I'm tired of religion. There is a hunger in my life. I contend for growth and transformation. I contend for value and productivity. I contend for wisdom and excellence. I contend for wealth and abundance. But in this season, oh God, and in this end time, I contend for the supernatural. Covenant Nation, Wolfpack, all following and all watching, lift your voice and let's pray. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Someone is crying to the God of heaven. Please pray. Pray. Take us back, oh God, to the days of our fathers in this country. Some of you even come from those physical families. Lift your voice and pray. Here at Wafbeck, Lord, we cry for a display of the kingdom, the power, the glory of God, the effulgence of your spirit. The anthem of Nigeria says that the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain. Lord, we pray. That the graces and the mantles that were upon our fathers, the graces and the mantles that founded the church in Nigeria, we cry for a restoration of those ancient mantles. Spring up our wells for a time like this. Someone is praying. Pastors pray. It's time for fire on our altars again. Businessmen pray. A dimension of the wisdom and the excellence of the spirit. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth. Cross darkness the people. But upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. It says, Gentiles will come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. We are a praying people. Lift your voice and pray. Something from heaven is about to come upon your life. I assure you by the spirit of the living God.
we are still praying forget about who is at your left and right it's time to receive Wolfpack, a platform for receiving something that can change your life We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. This is a move. We need a move. This is a move. Someone is praying, Lord, this is my ministry, this is my life. What you showed me in my dreams and my visions here at Wafbeck, let it come alive, oh God. Find the flames of my destiny, find the flames of my ministry. Hey, Palas Kabarata, you who are watching in your homes, watching in your offices, watching online, participate in the prayer. Open up your spirit from the US to the UK, from Asia to Africa. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Let something come upon my life, oh God, that will set me on fire, manifesting the supernatural signs, wonders, tokens of His presence in my territory, in my community. I I I I You will never be the same You've touched his grace Your life is changed You will Your life must change. It's a prophecy to you. Your life must change. Your life must change. Your life must change. Your mind must change. Your mind must change. Your home must change. Salapakarota siata. For someone who is trusting God for healing. Your health must change. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message 
be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you